Cars at 100 and we are back. So today we have something interesting for you to uh, to know and for me to talk about. Basically a couple of things about the news. Uh, hello everybody who's joining in. So lately um, we see a lot of changes with the car manufacturers and a lot of manufacturers are really doing something interesting with their car uh, brands. Hi, hello everybody. So I wanted to mention today Volvo. So Volvo is a company that has a Polestar naming inside the company. So Polestar is something that M Division has, AMG has for the Mercedes Benz. So Polestar is the car company, uh, the, the, the model of the Volvos that are high performance, supposedly. So they offer you more, uh, high, more performance in a vehicle. So, okay, so uh, Volvo recently announced that they're going to be making a Polestar Coupe. The biggest news about that is the price tag. Now, price tag is going to be ridiculously high, 170, 170 plus thousand dollars, which is, in my opinion, a lot. So the car hasn't had any Volvo, hasn't had any coupes in the past. Now, if they're releasing this brand new vehicle right now, which is coming out right now, this car is supposed to be reasonable. This car cannot be that expensive. Um, why I'm saying this is because this car is brand new. Now brand new cars when they come out with the brand new modeling themes, I know Volvo had the uh, coupes in the past, but I'm not talking about the, the, the type of coupes that are high quality, high performance, high level of um, performance. So this, uh, supposedly this Volvo has a high performance uh, aspect to it, which is the type of like, you know, that will compete with LC500, that will compete with the AMG GTS, that will compete with uh, BMW's uh, M4, something that will compete with high-end, also high-end cars, also Acura NSX and the GTR. But uh, we hear some someone driving a really good a loud exhaust and good and loud exhaust, so props to them. But uh, to come back to our conversation, I think what's important here to know that a lot of companies making the same mistakes over and over again. The mistake is overpricing their cars. Yes, it's kind of a niche thing right now, the Volvo's coming out with this coupe, but it's also unreasonable. So for me, it's I'm already kind of, uh, you know, weighed off because I'm thinking, what is this car? What is it going to have? What are the expectations? Um, I don't know if this car is going to be very popular when it comes out. Maybe because it's finally Volvo decides to make a coupe again. But in terms of the design aspect and the quality right now, they're raising their uh, level. Uh, when they see, when they, uh, uh, the, brand new, the brand new Volvo uh, came out with the SUV, it was a very, very good quality SUV. Uh, so that car was something that, you know, uh, XC90 I'm talking about. The XC90 was a very, very um, luxurious vehicle. It was competing with Range Rovers. The quality inside of this car and the performance that the engine with the hybrid drivetrain was producing was actually very good. So what that car meant for the public is that finally Volvo is bringing their uh, quality back. People expected that. People needed this to feel this uh, to fill this void that the Volvo has uh, made for so many years. Finally, they're stepping up their game. Somewhat reminds me of a Hyundai and Kia also. So Hyundai and Kia as well, not to jump to them right now, but they're also making these things. They're making these uh, differences. They're making these uh, quality cars right now. They're coming up with this quality, which is reasonably priced. Now, Volvo needs to stick with the roots of having a reasonably priced cars and having a quality. They can't lose that niche thing that they had. And safety was their biggest priority when they were building these cars. So they need to still keep this. Okay, so let me know what you think about Volvo making a coupe and uh, naming um, it Polestar in terms of their high performance uh, uh, division. So let me know what you think about that. Props or no, nope, you know. Um, so Tesla. Tesla has been producing cars and has been very, very quality, very much quality lately. And they have been making a very good moves 
and people are praising them is one of the best uh, American company right now on the market the shares are of the uh, of the roof it is very very uh, popular company right now and and they're really making a good progress right now so they are making this Tesla model 3 which supposedly is for masses and it's gonna cost under forty thousand dollars great but there is an issue there is an issue already issue is they don't produce them uh, on time they don't produce them uh, like supposedly people ordered them so there is already some type of chaos there in terms of the producing these cars and delivering these cars to the customers who expect them so in this way uh, because of demand is high they need to fill this demand hopefully they will come up with the better solutions and they will uh, do better things in future and they will deliver these cars in terms of technology and the way the car is for the price is what I think is expected in a way of Volvo as well but the car is fully electric and it's gonna be very 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 economical for any household so it's very good car at that uh, also the big news um, Hennessy Venom F5 so that car is finally about to come out now that is totally different than what we mentioned already uh, with the Volvo and the Tesla but this thing is a hyper hyper car so what means hyper car hyper hyper it means it's supposedly about to go 300 miles an hour which is insane like just to just to think about this number back in the day uh, world records were done in the deserts and they were going 300 miles an hour in especially made cars that were not street legal whatsoever no creature comforts nothing the car was about this speed so it was fully on speed car so it's like a speed racer basically and this car is about to have the interior is about to have a, um, a usable uh, space I think that you can I don't know have a passenger as well with you and it's gonna be street legal the biggest thing about it so Hennessy has a big expectations from the people and because they uh, made the um, Hennessy Venom GT in the past if they make this new Venom or whatever they might call it they might change it uh, expect this car to be unveiled actually also by the way in the SEMA auto show this is the most consumer uh, based uh, auto show for the tuners so this car will be uh, available there why because it's a um, high performance tuner uh, company uh, so hey can I ask a question of course go ahead with the questions if you have questions please guys go ahead ask me any questions if you like you can break my conversation here I'm just going about the news I want to let you know what's going on in the car uh, world um, also so Porsche exclusive Turbo S, the one that has a yellow paint job and is very expensive, almost hit 200 hit actually 213 miles an hour, which is insane for the Porsche, just a regular in a Grand Tourer car, and props to them. Uh, I own a 2016 Vandalia X6M, which I fuel pack. Should I use a? I live in India. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what's going on in India. We're from United States, so I can't really suggest you anything. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe, maybe you should consult somebody who's on the location there uh, in your country. Maybe they know the better about this. But uh, I'm not sure about the fuel pack. Um, you should find out more information. Um, need more horsepower. Uh, sup, bro? What's up? what's up everybody what's up thank you everybody for joining in thanks for the support thanks for the feedback uh, please visit our channel cars at 100 on YouTube uh, just type in and search cars space at space 100 and you will see uh, our channel and um, there is a very interesting content there please go check it out leave us a feedback leave us comments and uh, don't forget to subscribe um, basically uh, also just to continue with uh, the news Aston Martin is gonna do the brand new Vanquish which is pretty cool for me and my personal opinion about this car it's supposed to be sexy and it's supposed to beat in looks Jaguar F-Type arguably Jaguar F-Type is also one of the good better looking cars 
but I think what Jaguar is really missing is that performance edge. And I think Aston Martin really can deliver on that part. Expect that car to be close to 700 horsepower, 650 at least horsepower from its V12, probably gonna be twin turbo. It's not gonna have any more natural as aspiration. It's more of a, it's gonna be more of a Grand Tour car, but expect this car to have more performance in terms of the actual engine and the, how it's gonna be, uh, how fast and capable it's gonna be. The sound may be not gonna be as raw as naturally aspirated engines in the past of V12, but still it's gonna be a really good car. Um, also, Porsche Emission E is finally about to come out. Probably not as soon as we expect, maybe in a year or maybe a two, but probably closer to a year. Uh, the car is supposed to be fully electric. It's going to compete with Tesla. Finally, cars are stepping up into the Tesla territory and making a fully electric cars, which is, they got to be careful because coming from the gasoline-powered, a fully uh, gasoline engine cars to make a sound and to make this car properly it's a big big expectation for the people and big expectation for those who really expect something out of the gasoline engine cars it's like having a v12 natural aspirin and not giving us a v12 twin turbo or instead of v12 v8 twin turbo so the sound is going to be lacking on that part so the passion of the driving feel also is missing there Hopefully they do something good with that Porsche Emission E. And um, also, speaking of the Porsche Emission E, where is the Lucid cars, right? Lucid Motors cars. They were expecting to release uh, and looks like they're doing something like Fisker has done. Uh, hopefully they're not going to flop because the car is really good looking. One of the best looking electric cars that I've seen is the uh, Lucid Motors uh, uh, car. Very good looking car. Also, finally, I wanted to talk about, uh, in today's live, I wanted to mention a Porsche, uh, I'm sorry, Nissan GTR finally coming out with a more hardcore version of Nismo. More hardcore version of Nismo means it's going to be more capable, finally it's going to compete with a high-performance McLarens, with a high-performance Mercedes-Benz, with a high-performance Porsches. Finally, it's going to raise, they're going to raise the bar, but expected to have the same body, same interior because they uh, um, if, uh, changed the interior just recently so but expect it to have a little bit more horsepower hopefully close to 650 the car is really asking for that power and I think Tuner World is one of those um, cars that really can uh, deliver for that car more horsepower but car company engineer horsepower will never be replaced by Tuner company take my word for it um, okay so we have a couple of questions here. Um, Twin Turbos, what is Porsche Mission E? Porsche Mission, uh, Porsche Mission E, not Emission E. Uh, just to correct you, Porsche Mission E supposedly is gonna be sedan with all-wheel drive. Supposedly, I think so. I'm not sure, but they still making this car. But the car is gonna be fully electric. That's the biggest news about it. So that's what Porsche Mission E is. So let me know what you think about uh, today's um, live stream and let me know what you think about the news that we are getting from these car companies. Hopefully Volvo not going to flock with this Polestar car in terms of this, uh, in terms of this uh, uh, 170 plus thousand price tag, which is ridiculous in my opinion. The car is brand new, give us this car, let us taste this car. And maybe in future, if, if you let us taste this car properly, maybe we can get something that we're going to be able to appreciate and give you this amount of money, you know. So let me know what you think. This was Cars at 100. Guys, um, stay tuned for next time. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's conversation uh, with me, with you guys, with me. And uh, amen, I have a question. Where can I get parts for BMW 1991 525i? The best bet would be Google, but also there is a lot of um, there is lots of uh, places that you can search online. But uh, there are many many places. Uh, I'm not sure where you are located exactly, but you can DM us uh, these questions like that, and we'll try to help you out better. Um, so stay tuned, guys. This was Cars at 100. Don't forget to follow, subscribe to our car channel Cars at 100 on YouTube. See you next time.